Hey guys, Ryan here, and today I'm going to be showing you how the hub market works in three simple steps. First, we have assets, then productivity, and finally government, also known as EA. Let's start with assets. What an asset is, is anything that holds value for your team. This includes players, coins, jerseys, training cards, collectibles, anything that has a coin value. Assets have two values, what I like to call a base and a real. A base is often referred to as a quick sell, giving you the lowest amount of pucks for a player's worth. The alternate option is getting the real value out of a player, often the last price sold. As we can see here, Brad Marchand's last price sold is 1100 while his discard is only 613 This maxes out his base value, but his real value can continue to increase or decrease depending on inflation. Inflation is actually very simple. The more availability the card has, the less the price will be due to competition in the market. Inflation seems good, right? Players' prices drop, more players become available, and you can use whatever player you want on your team. This only works when EA releases the right amount of cards or the government prints the right amount of money to stabilize the economy. We'll get into this farther, but let's take a quick look at productivity. There are two ways in my opinion to create pure puck profit. Hut daily rewards is the first, it costs you absolutely no money to generate those pucks. Secondly is opening packs with money. It costs you no pucks and then you're receiving pucks. Thirdly, we can play games, but that is not a way of pure profit as you need to spend money on contracts to increase your player's productivity and therefore gain more assets. Think of productivity as your income. This comes from any way you are receiving pucks you did not previously have. This comes from playing games, hot daily rewards, selling your players, opening packs with money and selling those. Any way you are receiving pucks affects your income. It increases. My favorite way of receiving pucks is called working the market. Here we see a Jonathan Bernier bought for 40,000 pucks, resold for 60,000 pucks. That is an investment. This all creates a cycle. When you list a player, someone else is using their income, their productivity, to buy your player, increasing your income and your productivity to buy someone else's player. It's a cycle which continuously grows over time, creating more assets for more people. So let's do some math. Let's say you make 900 pucks per game, but you take out the contracts and injury cards you have to spend on to keep your players performing. Let's say you end up with about a 450 pucks profit. Let's play you. Let's say you play about four games a day, which is a lot to a lot of people, but let's just use it as a base number. So you make about eighteen hundred pucks per day, with a two thousand bonus every eight games or so for winning divisions or playing cup games, anything like that. So that allows you to make fifty six hundred in eight games every two days. Fifty six hundred pucks every two days, or coins, I guess. That would leave you with about sixteen seventeen thousand to eighteen thousand a week, which doesn't sound too bad. 70,000 a month, 70, month, which sounds pretty good, and 840,000 per year. Now, let's think. At the end of the year, you have only accumulated 840,000 coins. That's still not enough to even buy a Crosby or something, a player like that. It's really expensive, and that's without buying any upgrades for your team. Not a single player you have upgraded, and at the end of the year, you might be able to purchase a Crosby. That's pretty disappointing. So that's where working the market really comes into play. You're not going to have a fantastic team just from grinding out games. It's not going to happen. Let's get into working the market and how to actually make some pucks. Let's get this lesson out of the way first. Do not ever spend any money on packs. Yes, the bronze method is the only one that really does work a tiny bit, but we're talking about making some serious pucks. I've wasted so much, uh, so many coins on pucks in the past, it is unbelievable, and honestly, I don't want you guys to make the same mistake that I did. Bronze packs, you can make a little bit of money off, but seriously, it's not worth it in the long run. Let's make some serious cash. We need to understand that everyone in the community is acting towards the same goal. They want to end up with more assets at the end of the day than they began with. The goal is to do that quicker than everyone else. Let's look at how. Let's start off with a very simple way to make a serious amount of pucks for a beginner. So the one thing I like to do is check out the store first. It's best if a mega pack is out or a pack where you can pull rare trading cards pretty often. Mega pack is perfect for this scenario. What it's good for is because it creates a huge inflation in change team cards in the market and prices for those drop drastically. 
Recently, the Ultimate Pack's been out, and let's just take a look at how much change teams are actually going for. They're going for almost 2,000 each, minimum. That is crazy. When Mega Packs are out, sometimes they drop to like 800. You can snag them up for like 600 by now sometimes. So let's just do the math really quick. If you had 30 change teams you bought for 800 pucks each, that's going to cost you 24,000 pucks, which is a good amount of pucks, but hey, let's play some games. Let's just say, let's start it off. You can do less. This is a pretty high amount. So 24,000 pucks. And we wait and we sell them when the player packs come out for 1,800 pucks, which is pretty reasonable. Look at how much everything is going for right now. Those same 30 change team cards are going to go for 54,000 pucks. That's an extra 30,000 pucks just off change team cards that's insane and the more you the more pucks you have the more you can sell the cycle here's a real quick tip that's not going to make you much in the short run but in the long run it's going to make you a ton just log on every day it's really simple it takes about a minute and think of how much this adds up if you log on and get that 1250 puck bonus every single day that's an extra 30,000 pucks a month let's take a look at price locking it's a very simple concept but perfecting it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience to make sure you find a card that's worthy of price locking, you gotta look at a couple things. One is the availability of the card on the market and what time you are checking it at. For example, earlier in the video we looked at a player of the game Bernier that I was trying to sell. The most I have ever seen on the market was three, and at the time there was one. It was almost a guaranteed sell as there's only two options on the market and you just need to have a lower price than the other. Price locking works. It can work with almost any card, but you don't want to have a card too low overall. For example, I tried with Thomas Hurdle. It didn't work out. There's too many being pulled, and they're just inflating the market, and prices are dropping. It's not going to work. I often do it with jerseys. Jerseys is a great way to start off when you don't have too many pucks. Check out how many jerseys there are on the market of a certain team. Try and find a harder jersey to pull. So if there, let's say there's only five on the market, buy them all, raise the price one thousand make it maybe make the price of the jersey two thousand bucks and if you have them all people are going to be forced to pay that amount it works great if you can pull it off since we were just talking about how price locking affects collections let's look at collections for a second you aren't really going to make much money finishing them or reselling them you're probably going to end up on the shorter scale you might lose a bit of pucks but best thing possible is just to break even with the collections, you get a couple collection packs. These packs, you can't sell the players, so basically they are just used to help you finish more collections and hopefully player pull a player you can use on your team, therefore selling the player on your team, on the market, and using the cannot trade item. So the best thing you can do is finish all the collections because... Try and get as many cannot trade players on your team because that leaves you with pucks to buy other players that you could not pull in those collection packs. So it's a... It's a great thing. Collections are really good because it allows you sometimes to get lucky and you do get to open the packs for basically nothing if you can sell the players for around the same price you bought them. Next up, we have a method that's become very popular in the past two years. This is called the Team of the Week Quick Sell Method. What it is, basically, you buy a Team of the Week card, which we all know their discard values are higher than the regular cards. You slap a Captain card on them, or an Assistant Captain, and you put a couple Training cards. This boosts the player's discard value by... Like a tremendous amount. You'll see it. So I bought him here for 7,050 pucks, I believe. Um, his normal quick sell value would be 6,500. I put both of these on. I remove them from his roster, save changes, go to my collection, go over to Hot Lives, and then you'll see how much the discard is here at 7,725. So you'll think I only really made like about 700 puck profit, but still, 700 pucks is better than nothing. Also, a tip with Team of the Week players always buy at the end of their span all right when the cards are just at the end of being released because at this point the prices are lowest and when they are no longer available prices will slowly begin to rise as you can't pull them in packs anymore another method i suggest is trying to get some late night steals on some auctions a lot of people aren't on late at night even though time zones are different go on really late and you'll find some steals for auction when people list their players up for wrong times Finally, we have the 59 minute method, which a lot of people use and a lot of people actually find good, like have a good amount of success with it. Personally, I don't because I don't have that much patience, but if you stick around the 59 minute for long enough, you're bound to find a good deal eventually. You got to have a buy now on though. That is the trick. So when it comes up, just buy it as quick as possible. You really got to know the market for that, but that is a very good way to make pucks. 
All in all, I hope this video helped you and this is the graph for success in my opinion. So what you want to do, you want to sell cards basically higher than you buy cards so that the graph shown on the left right here is on a continuous upwards angle. Uh, the set, when you sell the card, your income increases obviously, allowing you to buy another card, but you want your income to increase more than your income drops. Remember there is a 5% tax which EA uses, basically imagine it as the government their tax to allow to print money, EA is allowed to print cards which people buy, and uh, the gameplay, basically people work for cards whereas people work for their money, people work for their coins in NHL. Hopefully this helps you out, if it did please drop a like down below, it's very much appreciated. That is all for now boys, we will see you next time.